Hey, Algebra 2, welcome back. Today we're looking at section 3.5 where we are now moving into systems with three variables. So far in chapter 3, we've been looking at two-dimensional graphs and finding solutions on the x and y coordinates. In this section, we are going to solve systems involving three variables, and we are now going to use a coordinate plane that has three axes. So we're going to have our x-axis, we're going to have our y-axis, and we're going to have now a z-axis. By the end of this lesson, you will know how to find a solution to a three-variable, three-equation system using RREF on your calculator. Each three-variable equation is going to represent a plane that occurs on your three-dimensional graph. No solution means that there are no intersections in, in uh, all three of the planes. One solution means the planes are going to intersect at one common point. Here we have a pink plane, a blue plane, and a green plane that are intersecting right at the origin, and that would be considered our solution. Planes can also intersect along a, along a line, and you learned in geometry that when two planes intersect, they do meet at a line, and that line then is infinite amounts of solutions. So in this section, we are working with a three-dimensional coordinate plane. And if you're having trouble visualizing that, if you look into the corner of a room, you'll see the lines that make up the ceiling and then the line that makes up the corner of the room. So you have three separate lines that are being formed in that corner. That's going to be the type of axes that we're looking at. So we've got a x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. Did anybody look in the corner of the room to see those three lines? The types of solutions we're going to get today are just one solution systems, and the solutions are going to come as an ordered triple, x, y, and z. So you'll have three solutions because we're dealing with three different variables. In your notes, I've included the directions on how to do RREF on your calculator. We will do them right now together, so if you haven't yet, you can get your calculator out but then you can always refer back to those directions or you can rewind the video and watch us do the problem together on the calculator. Using RREF is, um, on your calculator is when you put in a matrix into your calculator. So we're gonna use the RREF function and that is in the, the uh, matrix part. Before we get into that though, when we are solving using RREF, we have to rewrite our system as a matrix. So here you see a system that we'll, we'll be looking at. We've got a 3x plus y minus z equals 1, so on and so forth, yada, yada, yada. We're going to take this system and rewrite it as a matrix. To create a matrix, we're first going to make a, a large bracket. And this particular matrix is going to have three rows, one for each equation. And it's going to have four columns, one for the x, the y, the z, and then one for our constant. To create the matrix, you're only taking the coefficients of the numbers. So any number that comes after a plus sign would be considered positive. Any number like negative z that comes after a negative sign would be considered negative. Sometimes where the equal sign is, we can draw a line to separate, and then we have our answer. Once we get that first row done, we'll complete it with making the other bracket. When you're finished, it should look like this. So now we've got each part of those equations transferred towards the matrix. Now we get to use our calculator. So our calculator, the matrix is going to be found on this button right here, the x to the negative 1. If you hit second matrix, that's going to open up a matrix menu. We want to edit a matrix, so we're going to go over to edit, and then we'll edit this first matrix named A. Open up your matrix. Now the matrix is given in dimensions and right now I have a matrix one by one which is just talking about one cell but I want to make it um, match this rows and columns over here so the matrix dimensions are always rows by columns so we're going to take the number of rows three by the number of columns four and now we'll have our three by four matrix and I'm just going to hit enter to keep advancing to the next point of my matrix so I hit enter now I'm in my matrix so now you should see you've got four columns, and you've got three rows matching this matrix over here. The next thing you can do is you can just enter all your coefficients, hitting enter to advance to the next spot. So I'll hit three, 
enter, one, enter, and so on. So you can continue to add in all of your values for the matrix. When you finish, you should have your cursor pop, uh, pop back up to the top. So that's what your matrix will look like when you're finished. I would double check it so you make sure that you put your values in correctly so that we for sure get the correct answer. The next thing we'll do is we'll hit second quit. Now we're going to move into calculating this matrix using our REF. So again, you're going to hit second matrix. This time we're going to do a math calculation. So we go to math and we're going to scroll down to RREF. It's actually easier if you scroll up and go up around the table that way, you can get to RREF a little quicker. But you hit RREF, it'll bring you to your main screen. We're going to hit second matrix again, and we're going to select the name of the matrix that we want to find, the RREF, and we hit enter, close off our parentheses, now we're ready to calculate. So this will calculate the solutions to the matrix that we've put into matrix A. Now reading the solution, you think back to each column. The first column was our X column. So at one X is equal to two. The second column was our Y. It's showing us one Y is equal to negative one. Our third column is Z, one Z is equal to four. And there we have our ordered triple. So we have a two for our X, negative one for our Y, and then four for our Z. If we don't get this nice symmetry, of 1, 1, 1, representing 1x, one 1y, one 1z, one then there's a possibility that you made a mistake when you're entering in your value. So I would just go and double check that. So every matrix that we practice, we will get a nice solution. We won't have any no solutions and we will not have any infinite solutions. We should always get one solution. You can take a second to now make problem two a matrix and then we'll go back to our calculator and start finding the solutions. Once you've put your coefficients into the matrix it should look like that. Now we're ready to head to the calculator. You can hit second matrix and then we're going to go over to edit. My suggestion is we always just use matrix A. So we've solved the previous problem so we'll go in and edit matrix A again. It's still going to be a three by four, so we can advance using the arrows or the enter key. Now we'll enter in our new matrix, one, one, so on. So you can continue to fill in that matrix to match this one that we just made. After entering in the matrix, you should do a double check. I just go each column. So we got one, three, negative one, 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 negative three, two, negative two, one, negative seven, seven, negative nine. So everything looks in order. We're now ready to calculate using our REF. So here we go again. We're going to go second quit to quit that. You can hit second matrix. Go over to math. You can go down to RREF, second matrix. Go and calculate A. And there's our order triple, negative 1, 2, negative 4. Another thing you could do since you are using matrix A every time is you can go up into your history. Using the up arrow, just pull that RREF, saves a little time, and hit enter. So as long as you're always using A, you can always just go back. If you edit A and you need to find a, a new solution, just go into your history, find that, and then you can find those solutions. Next, we'll look at problem three, where we're going to have to start adding in zero terms into our matrix. So we'll head down there and talk about that. So I've entered in the first row, we've got an X of one, uh, we got negative two in front of our Y, one for Z, one for our answer. Now if you look at your next equation, you are missing a Y. So we're just gonna put a zero term in for that Y. So a zero would not affect this equation at all. But now we've got a two, a zero, a one, and a nine. So sometimes we have to manipulate our equations. The zero Y is not gonna affect it. That's gonna be what I put in. Next, I got a negative three for the X. I've got a one in front of the Y a zero term for my z, and then a answer of negative three. So this will be the matrix that I use for calculating my RREF. So next time uh, you see me, we'll get that matrix put in. So go ahead and do that into matrix A right now. Well, I'm back, and here is your matrix. So I'm just going to check the columns again. 1, 2, negative 3 looks good. Negative 2, 0, 1 looks good. 1, 1, 0 looks good. 1, 9, negative 3. So we are good. This time I'm just going to go up into my history, and I'm going to calculate the RREF. So we're going to hit second, quit. 
So we've got this RREF that we've done in the past, but now we've changed the matrix. So now we're going to get the ordered triple for the current matrix we're working on. And there it is. Two, three, five would be our ordered triple. We'll put that over here. So it saves a little time if you continually edit matrix A, you can just go jump back up into your history and you can calculate those pretty quickly. The last thing we'll do is we'll look at a story problem involving three variables, three equations. In problem four, it says you're an office supply distributor and budget $7,200 for 80 office chairs. You can buy leather chairs for $125 each, mesh chairs for $100 each, fabric chairs for $75 each, and if you want to have three times as many fabric chairs as leather chairs, how many of each type should you buy? I like to organize myself by just identifying the variables first. So in that last sentence, it's telling us what our variables are, how many of each type should you buy, means how many of uh, each type of chair, which means that we're gonna have an X for our leather, Y for our mesh, and Z for our fabric. Now we start trying to create our equations. So there are three different things going on in this situation. The first thing we start out with is talking about a budget. So let's make our first equation. Our first equation is going to represent this budget we have to keep. So if we're running a business, it's always a good idea to keep a budget so we're not spending aimlessly and losing money. So we are going to start writing an equation for our budget. We see each chair's cost. So we're gonna to start to represent that total cost and then using the $7,200 budget, make our equation. So we've got leather chairs for 125, so that's gonna be 125X, plus our mesh chairs are $100, so 100Y, plus our fabric chairs are 75, and that's gonna be Z, needs to equal our budget of $7,200. Our second scenario is the amount of chairs. So we're gonna have a second equation which is gonna represent the number of chairs that we need. And that's also found in that first section. We need a total of 80 chairs. So our X number of chairs plus our Y number of chairs plus our Z number of chairs needs to equal 80. So usually in these types of problems, we will see some type of budget or amount of money. Maybe it's a profit. And then we'll also have a total number equation that we're looking at. The last equation is a little bit trickier to find, and I call it a comparison. So sometimes we have a compare equation. So where we're comparing two variables to each other. If you look closely, it says we want to have three times as many fabric chairs as leather chairs. So we are going to represent that by making our third equation. So we think about that carefully. We want three times as many fabric chairs. So our fabric chairs, Z, needs to equal three times the amount of leather, which is our X. Now when we set up our matrix, we like to have our X column, our Y column, our Z column, and our constant column. Here we've got a Z and an X on opposite sides. So we're gonna rewrite that, so bring that 3x over, we'll subtract it, negative 3x plus 0y, because we're not even talking about the mesh chairs, plus z needs to equal 0. So there would be our third equation. So this one we've just kind of erased out. Now we're ready to start making our matrix. You can go ahead, take those three equations, and write out your matrix. And I'll be right back with the matrix so you can check. There's the matrix. I'm now going to open up my calculator. We'll put this into A and we'll use our RREF to find our ordered triple. Welcome back. That's the matrix that you should see. Uh, again, I checked the columns. We got 125, 1, negative 3, 100, 1, 0, 75, 1, 1, and then 7,200, 80, and 0. So we'll hit second quit. And since I edited A, I'll just go up to RREF A, hit enter, bring it back down. And there's our order triple. So if we want to stay within that budget and we want to buy those amount of chairs, we need 16 leather, another 16 mesh, and triple the amount of leather, 48 fabric. And there would be our order triple. So hopefully by now you've got a pretty good feeling on how to 
find the solution to a three variable, three equation system using RREF on your calculator. Keep practicing. There's lots of other videos out there. You can rewind, look back at problems we've done, but practice makes perfect and soon you'll be doing it in your sleep. Have a great day. Thanks for joining.